In this video, we're going to talk about something referred to as collapsing the stack. It's a technique that's used as a way to reduce the number of calculations that Max has to make as it works its way through the modifier stack. To show you what it's all about, I'll be using a file named Collapsing the Stack. You can find it in the Working Files folder. As we start out, it's important to realize that every entry in the modifier stack increases the amount of effort that Max has to make in order to properly create whatever the stack instructions have asked for. Selections, modifiers, more selections, and more modifiers, it starts to add up and fast. In a nutshell, collapsing the stack lightens the load. But in doing so, you gotta be aware that sometimes there's a price to pay in that collapsing down. Now when you think about it, Max would have an awfully difficult time functioning without the use of modifiers, right? I mean, modifiers really are the bread and butter to how Max works. Unfortunately, modifiers put a stress on the system, each of them adding more and more strain to what Max has to do in order to make its necessary calculations. You put enough load on the software and you'll soon start to feel things slowing down. With everything from redraw speeds in your viewports to even how fast or slow a file would open or save, it'd be no different than how much harder your car engine would be forced to work having, let's say, 20 sacks of concrete in its trunk. You'd end up not just going slower up hills, but you'd also be burning a whole lot more gas. Well, Max is no different. You start putting enough weight on its back, and believe me, it'll let you know it's not too happy about what you're doing. Now, the stress and strain you're putting on Max can sometimes be dramatically lightened simply by reducing the number of modifiers an object has in its stack. Again, a process referred to as collapsing the stack. Collapsing a stack down basically converts an object into an editable version of itself. But there's both a good side and a bad side to that conversion. The good side is you simplify your scene, saving both computation time and valuable system memory. The bad side? Well, let's go see for ourselves. Let's go in for a quick spin by orbiting our scene to check out how the object looks. Now with the object selected, let's head over to the modifier stack and see how things look. So we've got quite a bit there. Let's see if we can't make a few adjustments. We'll experiment with adjusting the stretch and both tapers. Now each time you change the values, go ahead and right click to cancel that out. That's a lot of stuff that Max has to calculate in order to be able to create the shape of our object. Every one of those entries pulls valuable resources away from our computer. It gobbles up RAM or system memory in other words. Let's see if we can't lighten that load. Down at the bottom of the stack, below the word tube, right click. In the menu, about halfway down, choose Collapse All. Now when you do, you're going to get a message on the screen. Basically what it says is, by converting down, we're going to be losing a lot of things. The original creation parameters on our tube, any modifiers that we might have in our settings, and any animation we might have done to those modifiers. Down at the bottom, let's click on the button that says, Hold Yes. Now, take a look at the stack. You've lost not just the tube's original creation parameters, its height, its number of segments, stuff like that but you've also lost all the modifiers that were in the stack. So you reduce the amount of information that Max has to calculate. But the price for that was permanently losing the ability to go back and make any adjustments on any of those original settings. Now, you could have also just partially collapsed the stack, meaning that certain information, certain modifiers, would not have been lost. Let's see how that's done. In the Edit pull-down menu, we'll choose the Fetch command. Once we've done that, we'll go back and select our object. Now about halfway into the stack, click on the name Taper. This time, right-click, then choose from the menu Collapse 2. Again, we'll click on the Hold Yes button and answering the warning. You now have at least the stretch left in the stack that we can adjust. So Max pulled out of the stack what we clicked on and everything below it. Let's drop down to that stretch modifier and make a quick adjustment. I'll take the amount of the stretch to negative 1. Now, there's actually a quicker way of collapsing down, but this one unfortunately doesn't give you any kind of warning or option to hold in case you want to go back. Let's take a look at that. Up to the Edit pull-down menu and we'll fetch again. This time, with the object selected, we'll simply right-click. Down at the bottom of the menu, we can choose either Convert to Editable Mesh or Convert to Editable Poly. So we again have removed all of our entries in the stack, this time around we simply just didn't get a message. Now, don't think that after collapsing a stack that you can't go back and add another modifier or two. It's just a piece of mesh. In the modifier list, let's drop down to the T's and add a taper. 
Why don't we now adjust the curve on that taper? I'm going to take the value down to right around minus 2.5. OK, remember how that warning message that came up when we collapsed said something about losing your animation? Let's take a look at an example of that. Back in the modifier list, we'll this time add a stretch. Why don't we now have a little fun and animate our newest addition to the family? Now again, this will have us using a technique that we haven't covered yet. So just follow the steps, then plan on having things explained in detail when you get to the chapter on animating. Down at the bottom on the right, let's activate the Auto Key command. We can also use the shortcut key N. Grab the slider above the timeline on the far left side, dragging it to around 50. Over in the Modify column, let's now change the stretch amount to 0.5. Back down on the time slider, let's now move to frame 100. There, we'll take the stretch value to negative 0.1. At frame 100, why don't we also give it a little spin? I'm going to go around 360 degrees. Then we'll roll our wheel back to us just a tad so we can zoom out, then we can play things back. Let's then stop our playback by either hitting the playback control again or simply using the forward slash in our keyboard. OK, down on the time slider, why don't we go to somewhere around frame 40? Take specific note of the shape of the object at that point in time. Now to convert down, and in doing so see what we're left with, let's go ahead and right-click and choose either Convert to Editable Mesh or Editable Poly. Let's go ahead and play our animation again. Now take a look at what happened here. The stretch modifier animation goes, freezing the object in the shape it was at the point in which we converted down. The rotation animation, though, not being part of the stack, remained in the scene. So when you lose things because of converting, it doesn't affect in any way what you might have transformed. Move, scale, or rotate, in other words. So that should give you a better idea about what collapsing the stack is all about. Now you know when and why you do, and a couple reasons on why you don't.